this lesson, we are going to learn how to determine the volumes of a substance or the substance using the methods called water displacement. Now, let's look at the name of the method. It's water. So, of course, we are using water because water is very stable, it's not corrosive, and it's safe. And displacement, think of the word displacement. So, let's go back and look at this picture here. First of all, we have water. And the water will be in a graduate cylinder or any container. So what we have here is an object or a substance. We want to measure the volume of this object very quickly. And one way we can do is using the water displacement methods. And how it works is basically you take the object and you drop in a graduate cylinder that contains water. Notice how there is a difference in the two readings. And that is because of the object here. This place basically gonna take over the space right here and gonna push the water up. And that differences from here to there is the volume of the object. So let's go back to the definition again. So in this case, the submerged does mean it has sunk all the way and submerged by the liquid, in this case water. This place the volume, which we see that right there, push the water up because this object has volume. So it will displace that volume right there. And that volume is equal to the volumes of the object. And think of this in terms of math. Basically, this will be your final reading. That is result from adding from. That is because that is result from adding the object. And this will be your initial reading. And once we figured out the difference, right, which is a basic equation, we take the final minus initial that will give us a change so we take final minus initial that will give us the difference which equal to the volumes of the object right there let's do an example here we have determined the volumes of aluminum in the graduate cylinder so how does it work is that i have two graduate cylinders one is before adding the substance and of course, you don't want to see the substance at all because right on the bottom, sink all the way on the bottom. So in this case, I have our reading 30 all the way to 40. Of course, each one will be 1. So we have 31, 32. But I have to estimate on the last digit, which is not there, and it is 0. It's on the line. So that is our initial reading. And the unit, of course, is ml because we measure graduate cylinder. Then over here, after we add in the aluminum, we have 30. Of course, this will be 35, so 36, 37, and 38. And that gives us 38.0 because this has to be estimated. So what we have here is again, going back to the question, take the final minus the initial, give us the difference, which is the volumes of the object. So to find the volumes of aluminum, all we have to do is take the final, which is 38.0 ml, minus your initial, which is 32.0 ml. And we have our difference in terms of 6.0 ml. Notice how we subtract, right? We keep the least decimal place, but both of them have one decimal place, so our answer also have one decimal place as well. Now, the volumes of what? In this case, specifically, is the volume of water that we're looking at. But we also know that the volume of water being displaced is equal to the volumes of the object. So this is also equal to the volumes of the object or the substance. In this case, is aluminum, 6.0 ml aluminum. And that's all we have to do for this type of problem. Let's try another problem again. Determine the volumes of aluminum in the graduate cylinder. So we have two graduate cylinders again, before adding the substance, which is aluminum. And after we add it, we have a change in the reading level. So this is our initial. In this case, we have a 10 millimeter graduate cylinder. So here I have 4 and here I have 5, so each one of them must represent 0.1. So we have 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, and so on. But the line is right there. This is the meniscus level. So if this is 4, this must be 3.9. And I know that the line really represents 0.9, so I had to go to a smaller digit. And this one is 0. That's why we estimate it. Let's go up here. We have 9, so it's 9.1, 9.2. Here I have 9.1 for this line and 9.2 for that one. So what's the distance between those two? Of course, 
And again, let's go back and look at our difference. Basically, you take the final minus initial, which is 9.15 ml minus 3.90 ml. And that will give us the volumes of aluminum, 5.25. Notice how this is two decimal places and this is two decimal places. Therefore, this must also have two decimal places as well. So ml of H2O being displaced, which is equal to the volume of aluminum as well. Isn't that easy?